Ascribing to a particular group identity affords one with an inordinate degree of appeal and sensorial control over the ideational activities of an array of vastly larger entities, institutions, and governing officials. This is accomplished by intimidating opinion leaders into silent submission to and acting in accord with its professed views, creeds, and edicts. In the case of Israel, for example, questioning the ethnocentric nature of the nation's history or progeny constitutes a thought crime punishable by social expulsion, loss of livelihood, and under some governments, even imprisonment. This specific art of complaint is at the core of a public opinion control technique utilized for censoring the ideas and free discussion of entire intellectual professions, and now with the technique's adaptation by racial, sexual, and gender-based identity groups, it is a commonplace feature of the broader cancel culture inquisition within the education industries from which opinions emerge. We examine the recent origins and deployments of such identity-based outrage and complaint on this edition of the Memory Hole Blog Report. This is MHB Report. I'm James Tracy. Because educators, the press, and the clergy are, at least in theory, responsible for forging the basis for modern society's ideas and views, their behavior and pronouncements require close observation for adherence to the politically correct party line. Potential violators must be weeded out and eliminated from the architecture of opinion formation, thereby setting an example for their peers, lest they call attention to the indisputable eminence of our true rulers. Meet longtime Canadian professor Anthony Hall. The tenured University of Lethbridge professor's thought crimes include publicly questioning the September 11, 2001 terror attacks, going so far as to suggest Israel's potential involvement. It appears that based on his experiences and record of events, the professor was effectively tried in absentia and found guilty of one or more thought crimes by Canada's Benet Brif. Yet, like the temple court of two millennia ago, the body could not legally carry out a punishment. It therefore had to in some way convince civic authorities to punish Dr. Hall by ending Hall's academic livelihood and career. The program culminating in Hall's official sentencing involved a frame-up job that began with a defamatory publicity campaign and suing for several weeks. Then, in August of 2016, an anonymous party hacked Hall's Facebook account and placed an inflammatory image of an Israeli Orthodox settler being seized by an army officer. However, the image was manipulated to make it look as if a Gentile European man was roughhousing the Jewish settler, and the sentiment was reinforced by a blatantly hateful and anti-Semitic caption. Without Hall's knowledge, the image remained on his Facebook page for two hours, during which time, as subsequent public records requests reveal, an unknown party alerted University of Lethbridge administrators and provincial government officials to the incriminating social media post. A media smear campaign ensued alongside appeals to university officials. The frame job was a success. Hall's fate was sealed. Professor Hall was suspended from his tenured teaching position of over 25 years. He was offered no due process before his suspension. A letter-writing campaign in the faculty labor union's efforts to restore Hall to his tenured post allowed him to return to his post briefly only to retire under pressure shortly thereafter. To this day, Dr. Hall remains without academic employment, despite his complete innocence. Joy Kariga was a promising African-American scholar who held a tenure-track assistant professor position in rhetorical studies at Oberlin College. Her academic career was thrown into turmoil when Israeli Jewish operatives discovered a handful of Kariga's social media posts, 
One of the popular memes poked fun at the inordinate power of the centuries-old Jewish Rothschild banking dynasty. Another suggested Israeli involvement in or support of the violent anti-Christian Islamic State, an observation that has factual merit. Like Anthony Hall, Professor Kariga was tried and found guilty in absentia. She would pay for her thought crimes with her academic career and livelihood. She was smeared without mercy by an Israeli lobbying and public relations juggernaut. Under pressure, Oberlin College's Jewish president and board of trustees suspended Kariga and later voted to terminate her tenure-track position. Her attempts to be restored to her academic post failed. She reached a settlement with her former academic employer in early 2020. Strict adherence to Israel's ideational codes is enforced throughout the U.S. educational establishment, extending to K-12 through public schooling. Any remnants of Christianity, including prayer, has long been replaced by various histories of identity-specific oppression, including the history of the World War II-era Holocaust against the Jewish people. William Ladson holds a doctoral degree in education and was a highly respected principal of Spanish River High School in Boca Raton. In 2018, Ladson was sent an email by a Jewish parent requesting mandatory inclusion of Jewish Holocaust history in the school's curriculum. When the anonymous parent pressed the principal about his personal beliefs in repeated emails and a face-to-face meeting, Latson responded, Not every parent believes the Holocaust happened. My thoughts or beliefs have nothing to do with this because I am a public servant. I have the role to be politically neutral but support all groups in the school. The parent did not believe Latson's response exhibited sufficient pro-Jewish sentiment. She also took issue with his efforts to remain an impartial, taxpayer-funded arbiter and employee. As a result, mob rule was initiated. The much-admired principal was subject to a defamatory publicity campaign after the parent's communications to Latson were released to local news media. An investigation of his on-the-job performance proceeded, followed by reassignment to another post in the school district, and when the indignation reached a crescendo, complete dismissal. Like the extra-legal targeting efforts waged against Professors Hall and Kariga, Dr. Latson's accusers remained in the shadows. An administrative law judge reviewing the case for the school found that Latson's impartial and unzealous approach indeed required a strong reprimand, but not as severe as termination. When the school board reinstated Latson in late 2020, the Jewish community responded once again with indignation. The rallying cry was led by political action groups as well as U.S. Congressman Ted Deutsch, who is himself a dual U.S.-Israeli citizen. In late October of 2020, Latson rendered his pound of flesh by way of a public apology for his remarks. The former principal appeared to treat the anonymous parents' inquiries about Holocaust studies as religious in nature, suggesting this was a viewpoint rather than established historical fact. The idea that Latson was not a zealous proponent of their views was unacceptable. Yet, one of the Christian parents similarly pleaded with Latson to incorporate Christian catechism into the public school curriculum. Would his position thus be cast as crucifixion denial? And would he similarly be pursued by mainstream media, Christian organizations, and politicians with such unbridled vengeance and lack of charity? Or are there, after all, double standards for what is deemed hate speech? I don't care. Good. I I hope the Jews did kill Christ. I'd do it again. I'd fucking do it again in a second. Amidst the spirit of cancel culture, faculty terminations are happening far more frequently and are often done based on few complaints from very vocal individuals or groups. Each termination is a woeful reminder to all educators that academic freedom has all but been lost and a similar fate awaits them if they fail to dance and mime to the desired tune of those whom identity allegiance is central. 
Indeed, it is those who, through their own unyielding pride, choose to deify their identity, to which all must bow and practice homage, and in so doing, they proclaim themselves the unrepentant gods of this veil of tears. If you like what we're doing in these videos, please consider becoming a patron of Memory Hole Blog at Patreon slash Memory Hole. For MemoryHoleBlog.org, this is James Tracy.